I'm Al Dominic, your host for Looking Ahead. Today, we're tackling complex accounting and financial reporting issues with a particular focus on how CFOs and audit committee members might navigate emerging challenges. I'm in our New York City studios with Tony Kleich, a managing partner in the technology, media, and telecommunications group at Crow, and Mike Schmerling, one of Nashville's most prolific serial entrepreneurs. As a quick bit of background, Mike co-founded, built, and sold eight companies, half of them to publicly traded buyers. He's the chairman of Clearbrook Holdings, a diversified management and private investment firm with investments across early stage companies, mature operating businesses, and commercial real estate. As you might imagine, we have a number of topics to cover in this episode, and I really appreciate both of our guests joining me here today. Mike, maybe you can help get us started. Given your business experiences, what is an example of a complex accounting or financial reporting challenge that you find companies dealing with today? Well, many of the financial uh, reporting challenges that companies deal with today are because it is, in fact, an imperfect science. Uh, one of the most uh, complicated, in my view, is, uh, is uh, ASC 606, which deals with revenue recognition. Uh, many companies struggle with it, and this is something that they have to apply uh, to existing contracts and, and across all areas of their business. Um, and the board that I'm on, uh, as an example, um, we had to go through every single contract, thousands, to, in order to comply with this. So that's just an example of one that is really a difficult challenge, and I think there are many others uh, as a result of SOX and others. Sure, Tony? Yeah, no, I would, uh, I would agree with Mike. And, uh, you know, from a RevRec, for example, you have four steps that you have to kind of comply with on revenue recognition. And there's five criteria, so you have a lot of different things. But I would say the other topic that's been of interest is business combinations. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of activity going on in the marketplace still on mergers and you know, acquisitions, and it's complex. Uh, business combination accounting is very complex. You got to account for all the assets, you got to account for all the liabilities. It's been a big driver of problems, so I would say one of my top is RevRec, second with business combination. Sure. Yeah. Well, so let's stay with you and yeah. maybe talk about an issue that you find regularly creates mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think it's a lot of it, Al, is on investments. Okay. When you underinvest, in some of these areas, especially in accounting and finance, you run into problems. And you know, Mike might be able to comment on that too, but I'd say when you don't have the technical expertise in-house, it would be one example of an underinvestment. Or when you don't have enough policies, procedures, you run into problems, especially when you get in these complex areas, and uh, that's when issues come up. Yep, yep. Mike, how would you maybe build on what Tony just shared? Well, one, one great example uh, that actually occurred this year was um, with Coors. They had an announcement of a major restatement as a result of uh, uh, an acquisition, buying back their own stock. And just as an audit uh, committee member in, uh, uh, in a situation like that, when you have a huge income coming from buying something versus selling something, mm -hmm. that's a clue. And um, uh, there are always people who know a lot more about firsthand information about how these things can come up. but but really, there's, there's clues and flags along the way that you, you have to just appreciate and, and pick up. Yeah. And uh, in this case, it caused a major restatement. Well, so you mentioned audit committees. How would you suggest that the audit committee react? Uh, maybe by extension, how should a risk committee prepare should something like this come up? Um, you, have to, you have to think about uh, a crisis plan before the crisis and be proactive versus reactive, I think. And uh, audit committees have a responsibility to do that. And um, instead of focusing on one or two things uh, that uh, typically is on a checklist, that you've got to dig a little deeper, get more granular into the operations of the company sometimes to make sure you understand and how to, how to prevent those things from happening. Yeah, Tony, what about, what's your experience? Yeah, I'll go, you know, having a plan ahead of time is great, and then having a plan when something happens. And I would say definitely you've got to support management you know, as you dig into things, uh, but you've got uh, re responsibility to stakeholders, so you've got to be thorough. So support management one, you know, conduct a thorough investigation. Number two, uh, get the experts, you know, whether it's RevRec, whether it's business combinations, you got to have the experts in these areas. So get the experts in, could be internal, could be external, and then just work on, you know, as you work with management on the remediation plan, make sure there's a good remediation plan in place, and then that you help management monitor that plan. Sure. Yeah. So then maybe, guys, you could talk to me a little bit about some of the more common preventative steps you'd recommend for companies in these complex areas. Yeah. I don't know, maybe, Mike, you could have something? 
Well, I think having a, a plan in advance is, is always key. Um, I'll, I'll go back to that. Um, there's, a, there's a great line about uh, being, a, being a, a director at a bank, for example, is like being an airline pilot. Um, you know, years of boredom and seconds of terror. Mm -hmm. And these things come up very quickly. So really having an advanced plan uh, and having who on the team is responsible uh, is, is really key. Tony, can you one-up that saying? Well, no, I can't, but I'll add to it. You know, I think uh, I'm a big fan of uh, preventative measures like risk management programs. And it allows management to identify and prioritize its risks. And then it allows us as board members to interact with those risk owners and those that are involved with managing those risks. It sends a great message to those risk owners on the importance of what they're managing and also allows the, the board and the committee to interact with management. So uh, big fan of the, of the risk management programs. Doesn't need to be uh, rocket ship, but just a simple program that drives uh, what's important. Sure. Well, Mike, Tony, my thanks for your perspectives. Again, I'm Al Dominic. Thank you for looking ahead with us today.